Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to overclock your Raspberry Pi 02W up to 1.3 gigahertz. And if you're lucky, you might be able to go a little bit higher, but I've only been able to reach 1.3 and it does make a big difference. So yeah, the Raspberry Pi Foundation finally did it. We got a new Raspberry Pi Zero. This is the 02W. If you're interested in checking out my review, I will leave a link in the description. Personally, I've been having a lot of fun with this little board, especially with a bit of an overclock on it. But before we get started here, before you start overclocking your Raspberry Pi, I would highly recommend using some type of heatsink for this unit. It can be a smaller heatsink like this, or once it's installed in the Pi Zero 02, it turns into a massive heatsink. Or you can go with one of my favorite cases, the Flirt case for the original Raspberry Pi Zero, which does work with the Zero 2. I got a review on this coming up, so stay tuned to the channel. But basically what we have here is an aluminum case and heatsink combo. The case itself makes contact with the Pi Zero 2 CPU and extracts the heat that way. And even with a 1.3 gigahertz overclock, it does a great job keeping this thing nice and cool. Not to mention, it does protect the Zero 2 pretty well also. Now in this video, we're gonna go over two methods of overclocking a Raspberry Pi. The first method is gonna be completely on the Pi using Raspberry Pi OS. The second method, we're going to be able to do it just on the SD card from another machine, be it a Windows machine, Linux, or even an Apple computer. Now the next thing you need to know before we jump into it is power draw. The Raspberry Pi Foundation recommends 5 volts at 2.5 amps, and even with this thing overclocked, I find that a 5 volt 2.5 amp power supply works great, but you can go up to a 3 if you really want to. So with that out of the way, let's move over to the first method of overclocking our Raspberry Pi 02W. Okay, so the first method I'm gonna show you is overclocking everything on your Raspberry Pi while you're running an operating system like Raspberry Pi OS here. Before we jump into the overclocking, there's a couple little things that I usually like to do and it's gonna make life easier on you. What we're gonna do is add a CPU temperature sensor up here and a CPU clock sensor. So if we right click up here on our taskbar, we're gonna to go to add remove panel items. Panel applets, we're gonna add and from here, we're gonna find CPU frequency front end. We're gonna add this one. And now when we hover over this, you'll be able to see the frequency that's happening right now. Once that CPU starts getting a load on it, you'll see it go up. But right now we're kinda of in an idle state at 600 megahertz. Next one I always like to add is a CPU temperature sensor. So our CPU temperature monitor, add. And now we'll have the CPU temperature listed right here. That way we really don't need to run any extra commands to check our clock speed or our temperatures on that CPU. And it just stays up there. You don't have to do anything extra. So let's go ahead and get the 02W overclock. We're going to open up terminal right up here, or you can press Control alt t on your keyboard. Now what I've done is create a little text document. Link for this will be in the description. I'll also list it out there. Really easy to use. So the first command here in this text document is sudo apt update. You can copy and paste it or just type it out. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in here. It's gonna prompt me for my password. So I got 23 packages that can be upgraded. We're gonna do sudo apt full upgrade. This is gonna upgrade all of those packages. So we can copy, paste it here. Might take a little while depending on your internet connection. Just give it a little time to finish up. Okay, so now that we're fully updated with a Raspberry Pi Zero 02, it's time to overclock. The next line here is gonna bring us to the config.txt. Now we can edit this from a separate computer and I'll show you that method next. But we're just gonna paste it right in here. sudo nano boot config.txt. Press enter. From here, we can edit the config.txt. And if you accidentally mess something up, you can always exit without saving. It'll prompt you to save. But at the very bottom here, what we want to add is arm underscore F-R-E-Q, which stands for frequency, equals 1300. This is going to bring our CPU from 1 gigahertz, which is the stock clock, up to 1.3 gigahertz. With the specific Raspberry Pi Zero 02 that I have, I did have to overvoltage up to 4 to keep this stable. But you can always test out overvoltage 2 and 3 if you want to. Personally, with all of my temperatures and everything, I'm fine with that over voltage of 4, and it does work well with the Pi that I have. But all of these SOCs are different, and you might be able to get away with a little less voltage. So with that added to the config.txt, we're going to press Ctrl X on our keyboard. Would you like to save the modified buffer? Press Y on your keyboard, and Enter. 
Now we've set it up so the CPU on our Pi Zero 2 is overclocked, but we have to do a reboot. We can do that by typing in sudo reboot. So now that we have all of that added to our config.txt and we've rebooted, the Raspberry Pi now knows that that CPU should be overclocked to 1.3 gigahertz. I'm going to put a little bit of a load on it, and you'll see this jump up to 1.3. Instead of running any extra commands to make sure that you do have that overclock, I would recommend using these applets. It just makes it really easy to do. So that was the first method in overclocking your Raspberry Pi. We did it all on the Pi itself while running Raspberry Pi OS. But there's a second way to do it, and in my opinion, it is a little bit easier. Plus, if you did it this way, and maybe your Raspberry Pi didn't boot up because you put in the wrong frequency or the wrong overvoltage, we can actually fix that by shutting the Raspberry Pi down, we're going to pull the micro SD card out, and we're going to move over to another computer. This can be an Apple computer, a Windows PC, or even another Linux machine. So I'm just going to shut this down, I'm going to pull my SD card out, and I'm going to move over to my Windows laptop. Okay, so here we are at my Windows machine. I just happen to be running Windows 11 on this, but it'll work with Windows 7 all the way up to 11. I'm going to go ahead and insert my micro SD card that I pulled out of my Raspberry Pi. And in Windows, it's going to show up as boot. And inside of here, we can access that config.txt. It's going to be a text document. But instead of opening this with the built-in Notepad in Windows, I would highly recommend downloading Notepad++. I'll leave a link for this in the description. I've personally run into that sometimes with the built-in Windows Notepad, that config.txt gets corrupted. But with Notepad++, never had an issue. So I'm going to download it here. Really easy install. Like I mentioned, link for this is down below. I don't want to run it, finish, close that down. What I'm going to do is just snap this over to the right hand side. And I have that overclock file right here. We can actually open this up with Notepad if you want to, or you can use Notepad++. This is just the same thing I had over on the Pi Zero 2. Now we're going to head over to our config.txt in our boot, which is that SD card. Right click, show more options if you're in Windows 11. Edit with Notepad++, and you'll see it's a totally different interface than the built-in Notepad. If we go all the way down to the bottom of this config.txt, this is where we're going to add our overclock lines. arm underscore frequency equals 1300. over underscore voltage equals 4. We'll just copy, paste it over here. Now we have that ready to go. File, save. We can close this down, just exit. And now, when we put our SD card into our Raspberry Pi, it's going to be overclocked. Like I mentioned, if you did try overclocking on your Raspberry Pi and you did run into an issue, just insert your SD card into your PC. We'll find that config.txt. Right click, open with, Notepad++, and you can delete these lines or fix it if you did type something in wrong. When you delete this completely and save it and then move back over to your Pi with this SD card, it's not going to be overclocked anymore. But this is just another way to overclock your Raspberry Pi. I personally think it's well worth overclocking the Zero 2. I ran a quick sys bench with a max prime to 20,000. Remember, lower is better here. The Zero 2 at the stock clocks, 104 seconds. The Raspberry Pi 3 got a 96, but when I overclocked the Zero 2 to 1.3, we got 88 seconds here, so we beat out the Raspberry Pi 3. And obviously, when overclocking anything, it's going to create more heat. Here's a chart here. I did a 10 minutes Dressberry test. No case at 1 gigahertz, 67.4 degrees Celsius. At 1.3, we got up to 77.8. And if I would have let this go a little longer, we definitely would have hit that thermal throttle. And that's one of the big reasons I mentioned the flirt case or at least some type of cooler. Because with the Flirt case installed, even with that 1.3 GHz overclock, we only hit 68.3 degrees Celsius on that CPU, and that's with that overvoltage set to 4. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. All links for everything mentioned in this video are in the description. And I'd actually like to know what clock you were able to get up to on your Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. If you can go over 1.3, please let me know the settings you use. It really comes down to the SOC, and unfortunately, I can't go over 1.3 with the one I have right now. But if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.